Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following question. Copy each graph of f of x and sketch its reflection in the x-axis g of x. Then state the domain range of each function. So in part d, notice the graph looks roughly like a square root function. There are three points that I'm going to highlight for you. So again, let's start with the three points. There's one point at 0, 0. There's a second point at 1, 1, and a third point at 4, 2. Now, if you think about the question, they're really asking you to sketch g of x such that it is a reflection in the x-axis. What that means is you look at x, y, and if they map this into x, negative y. So again, if I highlight the keywords here, reflection in the x-axis in terms of a mapping rule means x, negative y. So again, reflection in the x-axis is the same as saying mapping it to x negative y. So I go back to these points and I can start with the x component. Since x remains unchanged, I can still copy 0, 1, and 4. On the other hand, if I think about the y values, 0, 1, and 2 becomes negative 0, which is still 0 by the way, negative 1, and negative 2. Now let's take a look at the actual graph, g of x. So I go back, I'm going to erase the original points here, and with the same color, here are the new points. 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 4, negative 2, and I can connect them just like that. And that becomes g of x. Now if you think about the domain and the range of the new function, look what happens x is going to be an element of real numbers such that x must be greater than or equal to 0. If I think about the range, y is an element of real numbers such that y must be less than or equal to 0. Now, let's do a bonus question. Let's switch colors. Here we go. Let's say the bonus question is we go back to 1D except this time we're graphing negative f of negative x. So again, let's say there's a new function now, k of x, and we call this negative f of negative x. And again, we're gonna focus specifically on the same part. So negative f of negative x, what happens now? Well, press pause, you can try this. When you press play again, I'll be here. Welcome back, everybody. So again, if you look at this carefully, x, y is now mapping to that first negative sign means reflected with respect to the x-axis. So that's going to be negative y. And the negative sign inside the brackets means reflected with respect to the y-axis, which means negative x. Now again, I can start with the same original points. So I'm still looking at 0, 0. I'm still thinking about 1, 1 and 4, 2. The major difference here is you're going to take the negative of the x components. So it's going to be 0, negative 1, negative 4. And if I take the negative of the y components, that's going to be 0, negative 1, and negative 2. Again, let's go back and draw this. 0, 0 is going to be here. Negative 1, negative 1 is going to be there. And negative 4, negative 2 is going to be roughly speaking somewhere there. I'm extending that graph a little bit. So imagine this graph continues like that. And again, this is going to be the new function, k of x. Again, what do you notice? Let's write down the domain. x is going to be an element of real numbers such that x must be less than or equal to 0. What about the range? y is an element of real numbers such that y must be less than or equal to 0. If you find this math video meaningful, and it's adding value to a math life, please consider to subscribe, share, like, and comment. I hope this makes sense.